in our previous section, uh, we have seen uh, how we can uh, configure the uh, OSPF into our MPLS VPN. So now let's uh, check out some concepts related to OSPF into the MPLS VPN. So let's start. So this is our PE1 and we have PE2, right? So between PE1 and PE2, we have the IBGP neighborship that we already know, right? So we have the IBGP neighborship between PE1 and PE2. So now the concept is the, the first thing is I want to discuss about the process ID. So the process ID in our example that uh, we are using right now, it's OSPF 100, right? On both side. We have been studying since our uh, CCNA and uh, CCNP that this process ID is locally significant, right? But this is not the case into MPS VPN because this process ID is very crucial for us. Okay, so this process ID must be same on both side, on PE1 and PE2. So what's the normal behavior? If we advertise something from CE, let's say uh, we advertise, as we also checked in our previous uh, section, we advertise one subnet from here, a dot a dot a dot slash 32, okay? From OSPF to BGP and then the BGP process exchanged the VPN V4 route to PE2, okay? So now we also redistribute the BGP into OSPF at PE2, right? So now into the MPLS VPN, we have only two options. Either the PE can redistribute the routes to the customer's devices as type 3 LSA or type 5 LSA. Okay. And what is the condition for type 3 LSA? If PE2 receives the routes from PE1 as type 1, type 2 or type 3, in that case, it is going to advertise the prefixes as OIA or the as a layer 3, uh, sorry, my bad, not layer 3, as a type 3 LSA or, right? Or you can say the inter area prefixes. If PE2 receives the prefixes from PE1 as external, uh, as an external LSAs, so then in that case, it will uh, advertise the subnets as type five. So we do have only two options. Either the provider as will uh, send the route as a type three LSA, if it receives the prefixes as type one, type two, or as a type three LSA. If it receives uh, the prefixes as external LSAs, then it is going to advertise it as type five. So it means it, uh, even if you advertise something from a CE1 as a, let's say type one LSA, that one is also going to uh, see, if you if you check at CE2, it will be seen as a inter area route or a, as a type three LSA. If you advertise something as a type two LSA, it will also be visible in the OSPA process of CE2 as a type three. Similarly, if you advertise something as a inter area or uh, anything with a type three LSA from the customer as device. So on the customer as device on the right hand side, you will see that the routes will be seen as a inter area routes. So in the MPLS VPN, we do have only two options and <clears throat> these two options P2 is going to follow only if the process ID is same for PE1 and PE2, okay. And the process ID in the MPLS VPN for OSPF is known as the domain ID. So when uh, PE1 is redistributing the routes from OSPF into BGP, so there is one field that is the BGP OSPF community. In that, it will carry the uh, process ID and the process ID on the other hand side, when PE2 will receive, it will be known as the domain ID. It will be known as the domain ID. If this domain ID or the process ID is same, only then P2 is going to follow these these two rules. Okay. If this process ID uh, or domain ID 
is different then irrespective of what it is learning from pe1 whether it is type 1 type 2 type 3 type 5 or type 7 lss it is going to redistribute them as a type 5 only okay so these process ids uh, are very crucial uh, in this uh, mpls vpn if they are not the same then our provider as routers are not going to check anything they are just uh, they will just consider those routes as external routes and they will just redistribute them as a type 5 lsa now let's uh, verify it quickly so we have already very uh, configured the mpls vpn ospf related configuration so for example i'm at pe1 we have advertised 6.6.6 right so this 6.6.6 must be present here into the vrf table of pe1 or you can say let's check it like this show bgp vpn before unicast all and the prefix right slash 32 now you can see here route is received from for, uh, the next top value is 4.4 .4 and let me grab the pin quickly now you can see here that we received this particular prefix right 6.6.6 .6 here and the next top is 4.4.4 .4 you can see here and we received it from R2 because we don't have the direct neighborship we are receiving it from the route reflector right and now the important information here is the extended community this is the extended community this is the route target so route target is 400 colon 400 right i'm at pe1 so you can see the route target value here for the pe2 it is 400 colon 400 right now let's go back to our configuration okay so now you can see here the ospf domain id right ospf domain id is it will convert it into a hex value so if you see here closely this is 64 if you convert this 64 hex value into decimal it will be 100 and this is the process id right this is the process ID that we are using for the OSPF. Here we have the OSPF route type. OSPF route type means, so first of all, this is the area ID. We are using area zero. So you can see all uh, octets are zero. It means it is area zero. Here you can see it's type two slash zero. So it means it's a intra area route, right? It is a intra area route. And here you can see the OSPF router ID 0.0.4, .0 which is the router ID of PE2, right? Originator is 4.4.4, .4 cluster list, you can see it is the route reflector IP. And one more information is there, the MPLS label. The MPLS label that PE1 received for this particular uh, subnet 6.6.6 .6 .6 is 409. Let's also verify this information. Let's check it out. Let's go to PE2. Show MPLS forwarding table. Now you can see for 6.6.6 .6 subnet in the bracket, you can see the V. It means the VPN level that I already discussed multiple times. So for the 6.6 .6, uh, subnet, the VPN label that is generated by the MPBGP is 409. Here you can see the VPN label is 409, right? So this is the OSPF domain ID. So because the OSPF domain ID is same on both sides, because uh, here you can see it's 64 in hexadecimal in, in binary, it will be 100. Uh, not binary sorry in decimal it will be 100 which we are using as a process id of ospf in our case so it will be same on uh, pe2 also if you check show uh, bgp 
VPN V4 unicast all the route that it is receiving from PE1 is the loopback 8, a loopback uh, 0 of router 8. So here also you can see it's 64. That is the domain ID. If you convert it into uh, the decimal, it will be 100. So because the domain ID is matching here, both on both sides it is 100. That is why if you check on either of the customer edge device, you will receive these uh, prefixes as uh, inter area routes, as an in inter area routes. Let's check. So here it's already, you can see customer is router 2, it is receiving the A.8 subnet as an inter area, as an inter area prefix, right? As an OIA, because both the PE devices, they are having the same domain ID. Okay. Now let's check what happens if we do use the uh, different OSPF processes. So now in that case, if PE2 receives the information from PE1 with a different domain ID, then it is going to, it must redistribute the routes or it must send the route to CE2 as a type 5 LSA as we discussed, right? So now let's verify this. We can also set this domain ID manually that we are going to do now. So maybe let's go to R1. And what we need to do is we will go to our uh, OSPF process and we will say domain ID type. We can use any of this number. Let's say we are using the type 0x0005. So we need to give this value keyword as well, then we will type a six byte uh, value, let's say zero, 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 zero. Okay, so now once you set the uh, domain ID, you need to uh, break the OSPF neighborship, only then it will be active. So let's say clear IP OSPF, process will say yes now uh, we break the neighborship now let's check at pe2 again the same thing it is it will learn the roads eventually let's wait okay so now it learns the route now you can see the domain ID is something different, right? Because its own uh, domain ID, if we check at PE1, it will be something else. Show BGP, VPN, V4, Unicast, all uh, 6.6.6 .6 slash 32. You can see its domain ID is six. You can see a 64 value. It means uh, the OSPF number is 100. So now, because the domain ID that PE2 is receiving is different. So now let's check what PE2 is sending to CE2. Then as we discussed, so as per our thoughts, now CE2 must see the routes as external routes, right? Now let's find out. I am at R6. Now you can see earlier 8.8.8 .8 .8 customer as router 2 or R6, it was receiving as inter area routes, but now it is receiving as the external routes, right? Because PE2 is receiving a different domain ID. Now, when PE2 receives a different domain ID, it is not going to follow this rule. It is not going to check uh, what type of routes it is learning from the PE1. So it is just assuming that uh, or it will consider all these routes as a external routes. That is why now you can see earlier, the customized router, it was uh, learning the routes as inter area, but now they are changed to OE2 or the external routes, right? Let's uh, make it same. Let's change the domain ID here as well to make it as it was earlier. Also, and now let's see. OSPF neighborship clear IP OSPF process. Now let's wait. 
Let's check if we are receiving the routes. Okay. Now let's go back to R6. learn the routes now you can see again because the domain id is now matching on both of the side pe1 and pe2 that is why now it is again starting uh, start, started following the rule because now it is receiving the uh, routes as a intra area routes that is why now it is redistributing them as a type 3 lsa or in, as an inter area routes so now again c2 is receiving as oia so if you like my videos, then uh, I would request to like, share and subscribe. See you in the next section.